All right, it's actually a cold morning in South Texas, so I figured it would be a good morning to do a little overview video on this uh, H120 Ash uh, Army Space Heater. Uh, I picked this up and got it working. There's not really any videos showing how these things work and stuff like that on YouTube. Uh, there's a couple similar models like an H140 and stuff like that, and I'm sure they're kind of close to working the same. Just figured I would go over setup and how it works. It's a very simple machine. Just before I set it up real quick, it was missing this. Found a 12 inch plate, used some 550 cord and replaced that plate going over it. The uh, thermostat that's supposed to come with this unit was missing. And I found a generic waterproof three pin connector. I replaced that. It uses the fancy military uh, connectors. So what I did was replaced it with a, uh, just like a regular extension cord connector here. The last thing that you'll see after I get it set up that I did was I got a little like rain cap for the exhaust pipe that goes on this thing. All you really need to get this thing set up and I'd recommend if you're gonna get one of these, basically channel locks and one of like the universal screwdrivers that, that'll get you everything. Well, the first thing you do is on the Phillips head side, get your covers off on here and on the flathead side, these are little quarter turn cam lock type screws. There's some stuff kept in here. I keep my extension cord. The remote thermostat, which you actually do not need this to run it, but I was able to find one on eBay. This is the little rain cap piece of the exhaust I was talking about. And then inside here, I don't know if you can see it really well, the, the exhaust pieces do get stowed in here. So there's little thumb screws with these little levers. Can you see them? Okay. But you just loosen these lever levers a couple of turns. And this will pop out and this is your exhaust elbow. And that's all that's stored in here, at least for me. So then you can close this back up and these panels in order for this to run properly do all need to be closed because there's a safety switch that will not allow the burner to fire if these are all not closed. And at this point, I guess I'll plug in my uh, thermostat as well but I'm not gonna really unwrap it all the way just because I'm not actually connecting it up and running it into the house or anything like that. The next step, you have to make sure this little cover comes off because this is where it sucks in clean air for the burner. Then over here, there's another little spot with two quarter turn flathead screwdriver. This is where the big piece of the exhaust pipe is. Oh, there's three. I'll just leave it like that. Then there's supposed to be four bolts. One of them was broken off, but these do not need to be very tight. I just snug them. That's why I say channel locks. Um, I believe this came with flatheads as well. So you could just use a flathead screwdriver for the whole thing. This unit, when I got it was missing them. So I just found bolts in my hardware bin and put these on there. Over here is where you put your fuel, like your diesel and stuff in. Um, and there's an external fuel connection and you have a little lever from operating off the internal tank or the external tank. Uh, my fuel gauge from sitting out in the sun, you can't really see it. There's a little sight glass over here for looking in to confirm that you have your spark when we go through the start procedure and then that it's actually firing. So then in here, this is where all your controls and stuff are. Let me rewind. So during setup, quick splice in, I forgot to talk about, uh, there is a really easy access in here too for underneath the control panel. And I did get some spare bulbs because some of the bulbs were burnt out. 
and stuck them in there. You can obviously just use it like this so that you're just heating an area. This is your supply side where the heat comes out of. You can set this up going into your building, your tent, wherever you want to heat with some of the ducts. I do have the ducts. I'm just not setting them up for this. And then that's considered the fresh air setup. And then you're just sucking in all fresh air from outside. Or you can set up both ducts to go in and out. So you're pulling hot air in from where you are. And then this little adjustable louver right here, you can adjust to allow a certain amount of fresh air to come in. You, I don't know if you could see it in there, but basically, so it'll allow a little bit of fresh air to be sucked in, you know, similar to like your air conditioner window unit when you open and close it. One thing that's not working right now is this fuel pressure gauge. Haven't found a solution to that, but uh, I mean, if it starts burning, that means you have enough fuel pressure. Over here on your controls, you have two breakers, hour meter, master switch. There's three lights, your power obviously when it turns on. There's a high temperature light, which is if there's too much temperature buildup in the exhaust side, it will shut itself down to prevent any sort of fire. And then it lets you know that if the flame goes out. So if you're too low on fuel or the safety switch I was talking about where there's not enough vacuum or something like that. So the way the startup procedure for this goes, put it on vent and you can see how it builds up and starts blowing out vent, obviously. And then you hold the purge switch for a while. You're supposed to watch for your fuel pressure to come up to at least 100 PSI, but we don't have a pressure gauge. So I hold it for like 10 seconds and then I will move it over to heat auto. And then you can see it start. It gives a little puff of smoke and you can hear it. And if you come over to the sight glass, you can see that it starts to burn. And it's probably because this unit is older, you can see how it's kind of like flickering, but as it runs for a while, it does start to burn a little bit better. And you're already producing heat. This is in the heat auto mode. So I just have it in high, so it will run. This is kind of like the manual mode in heat auto. You hold these for a couple seconds, and then that goes to your set point, and you'd set your temperature. And it has quite a range. Let's just put it at 75 for now. So if you didn't have this thermostat, you'd simply skip the heat auto and just move over to manual. And all it's gonna do is turn on and just basically put out heat until you hit this high temp. So it's gonna act like a space heater that you would put on. And it's just gonna run. Uh, when you're running it in fresh air mode, obviously you want to make sure that you don't have stuff that's going to like suck in. Um, when I first fired this thing up, I think I have a clip saved on my phone. I might put it up in the corner or something here. Um, there must have been grass or something in this thing that got sucked in. It blew black smoke everywhere. I mean, I know the old diesel fuel and stuff burnt off and it was dirty, but there was grass or something in there that burnt off too because you could smell it. So you wanna make sure that like stuff like that isn't gonna get sucked in with the fresh air side of it. But I'm sure where yours, is that why you're standing there? This thing puts out some real serious heat. I mean, it hasn't even gotten fired up all the way, but it says it's ready to put out like 150 degrees. It will do that. I mean, it's hot enough to the point where if you put your hand right here when this thing gets really fired up all the way, it's, it's too hot to keep your hand in front of it. So. Let's let it go and we'll let it run for like five minutes or so and we'll come back with the temp gun and I'll show you what the temperature is coming out. I didn't realize it ran out of fuel. So you can see when it ran out of fuel, see how the light lit up that says flame out. Okay, so when the flame goes out, move the switch over to vent. Then hold the purge switch like we did at least this is what I'm gonna do because I know that I ran out of fuel. And you should be looking to see if that fuel pressure gauge comes back up. Okay, I did it for like 30 seconds. I'm gonna go right back to heat manual. The flame out light is gonna be back on. Hold this for a little while. You'll hear the little solenoid inside. It reset itself and it booted back up. 
then check for that flame again. And it's going to stutter again because there's probably still a little bit of air in the system. All right, so it's been running for like five minutes in manual heat. You can see there on the temperature sensor, the one on the right is the one that runs the thermostat. It's at 170-ish degrees. So obviously things are going to get cooled off real quick because it's just pulling in fresh air, but it works pretty good. So uh, yeah, so the shutdown procedure for this, not that it really matters a whole lot, but what you're supposed to do when you're done with it, you put it on vent for two minutes. And basically what that does is it just moves air across what's hot over there to cool it down before you completely shut it off. All right, quick thing I forgot to mention too is I did replace the inflatable tires that were on it. They were completely falling off. I just had some sitting around the shop. But um, one of the things I noticed when you're using the thermostat, even though the thermostat has a manual mode when you put it and it says high, it won't go as high is when you put it in manual heat. I think all it does in the high mode is it, it'll set it to the 85 degree set point. It won't put out as much heat. So if you're trying to just heat like an open space like this, it doesn't work as well. You're technically not supposed to operate it like I am right now with it sitting up on the wheels because when it's sitting up like this, it, it's actually not very stable. Like you can come over here and just lean on this and you can see that it'll tip back. Uh, it actually happened where my son did it and it pinched his uh, ankle pretty good. The other thing with the thermostat too that I noticed in the auto setting is it doesn't always respond right away. Say you move it from manual heat to auto, it might take a couple minutes before it actually responds and it kicks in or if you change the temperature or something like that. Uh, just little quirks that I noticed. It works, it puts out good heat. Uh, pretty cool unit, relatively simple to work on. The only other thing that I need to figure out is putting a fuel filter on it because it seems that the ones that are in here are like unobtainium now. Uh, I'm probably gonna switch it to something else. Anyway, that's a good overview of the video. If you have any other questions on these units, leave me a comment. If you want to see a follow-up for some of the other stuff that I'm going to do to it, let me know too. All the stuff that I changed on this and any parts and stuff I bought for it, there are going to be links in the description to it. So um, just figured I'd put something out there on the YouTube going over these because it doesn't seem like anybody else has.